The goal of this training video is to describe methods to freeze human skeletal muscle biopsies immediately after surgery in a manner that best enables future histological, biochemical, and molecular genetic assays. The procedures shown in this training video should be followed at all clinical sites that enroll patients in a clinical study. The procedure has a pre-biopsy part where preparations are made about 30 minutes prior to the biopsy. After, there is a post-biopsy part where a single muscle specimen is received that has just been excised from the patient. For this demonstration, the biopsy measures approximately one centimeter in length and a half centimeter in both width and depth to perform our histochemical and biomolecular assays. Once the biopsy is excised from the patients, it is placed by the surgeon in a plastic dish on a piece of wetted gauze. The post-biopsy part of the video describes all procedures for processing, storing, and shipping of the specimen. Before we begin, there are some cautions for working with human skeletal muscle. For all staff handling biopsies, gloves must be worn when handling a biopsy. A laboratory coat, safety glasses, and a mask should also be worn. Cover all non-intact skin exposed to patient blood or bodily fluid with a water impermeable occlusive bandage. Used needles and syringes must be discarded into a puncture resistant sharps container. Don't forget to remove all personal protective equipment when leaving the work area. The materials required for this freezing procedure are as follows. Plain index cards cut to size, which will be used to mount the muscle tissue. Fisher Healthcare OCT compound used to hold the muscle to the index card when freezing. Two Nalgene 2 mil long-term storage cryogenic tubes, which will be used to store the tissue after freezing. One sealable biohazard sample bag, used to store the cryogenic tubes once the muscle biopsy has been processed. One styrofoam shipping container, used to ship the samples. A courier prepaid label is to be attached to the outside of the shipping container. In addition, you will also need 15 kilograms of rice-sized dry ice. 500 mils of isopentane, liquid nitrogen as well as a 1 liter Nalgene container or similar to contain the liquid nitrogen, one 500 milliliter plastic beaker to hold the isopentane, one pair of forceps, one hemostat, one scalpel, and distilled water. We are ready to carry out the pre-biopsy procedures about 30 minutes prior to receiving the sample. Start by labeling your cryotubes using water-resistant labels. Wrap the label around the tube from the middle of the label. Do not overlap the label, obscuring information such as barcodes, etc. Press the label ends together to form a flag. If possible, you can also cover the label with a clear label protective tape to prevent smudging or tearing of the label. Set aside and repeat with the second tube. Once you have your cryovials finished, pre-label your sample hazard bag using the labels provided. Set this aside for later. Now you can prepare your shipping container. Fill the styrofoam container approximately half full with dry ice. For this size of biopsy, a 2 mil cryogenic tube is appropriate. Take the two 2 mil screw top cryotubes and add 0.25 mil of distilled water to each of them. Screw the tops back on and place both upright in the dry ice to pre-chill and freeze the water completely. This should take approximately 10 to 15 minutes. This is to keep the sample hydrated during long-term storage and prevent desiccation artifact. The water must be frozen before the biopsy enters the cryotube. If extra labels are provided, it would be a good idea to prepare additional cryogenic tubes at this time. Once the shipping container and sample bag are ready, prepare the freezing medium. Fill your one liter Nalgene container about one half to two thirds full with liquid nitrogen. Next, fill your plastic beaker with approximately 250 mils of isopentane and carefully put the plastic beaker into the Nalgene filled with liquid nitrogen.
After about five minutes, the isopentane will become slushy, predominantly around the outside. This is expected. However, some isopentane must remain liquid in order to immerse the specimen. Isopentane will freeze solid after an extended period. Remove the isopentane from liquid nitrogen to reliquify. If you have a temperature probe available, the required temperature for freezing of the muscle biopsy is between minus 160 to minus 140 degrees Celsius. You are now ready to receive and process the muscle biopsy. We now move to the post-biopsy methods, where the single muscle specimen measuring approximately one centimeter by a half a centimeter by a half a centimeter, or a half inch by a quarter inch by a quarter inch, is received on a plastic dish with saline wetted gauze. The line drawn onto the dish indicates the direction of the muscle fibers. You will cut perpendicular to this line. The muscle should always remain parallel to this line to ensure proper cutting and mounting. First, check that the water inside the two mil cryotubes is completely frozen. Then, prepare the index cards provided by taking two of these and placing only a small drop of OCT on one end of each of the two index cards. There should be just enough so that once the biopsy is placed face down, no OCT spills out the sides of the biopsy. Any excess OCT in biopsy samples could later affect proteomic analysis. Now, keeping track of orientation of the muscle sample, take your scalpel and cut the one centimeter side of the biopsy at the middle. The center cut defines the face of the biopsy, where the sample will then be placed face down in the OCT. Using your forceps, gently lift one piece and place it face down on the OCT on one index card. Do this with the second piece of muscle again face down on the second index card in the OCT. As soon as the muscle biopsies are placed on the OCT, immediately proceed to freezing the samples in isopentane. Proper mounting of the biopsy is essential for later analysis down the road, so we will repeat this step one more time. A small drop of OCT is placed on the end of each of the index cards. The biopsy is cut in half. Then each biopsy piece is placed face down on the index card. Once both pieces of tissue have been mounted on the index cards, use a hemostat to carefully lock onto the opposite free end of the index card. Carefully take one of the index cards and muscle to the cooled liquid isopentane and lower the muscle into the isopentane. Swirl the samples in the isopentane for 15 seconds. Retrieve one of the pre-chilled 2 mil cryotubes from the dry ice, open and place the index card and the sample into the tube by releasing the hemostat. Quickly replace the screw cap and put the 2 mil cryotube back on dry ice. Now repeat the above procedure with the second muscle sample on the index card. Again, use the hemostat to lock into the free end of the index card. Lower into the isopentane and swirl for 15 seconds. 
As noted prior, if the isopentane begins to freeze solid, simply remove it from the liquid nitrogen and let it thaw on the bench top until it becomes a slush again. Place the second frozen sample into the second pre-chilled 2 mil cryogenic tube on dry ice. Replace the cap and quickly return to dry ice. When both samples are frozen, place both tubes in the biohazard bag, seal, and immediately place back on dry ice. Care must be taken to ensure that the samples are kept cold at all times. Keep exposure to room temperature air and warm fingers to a minimum. Once both biopsy samples have been processed, you can prepare the shipment. Top up the shipping container with approximately 12 kilograms of dry ice. This amount of dry ice should last three days while shipping. The sample must be in the middle of the dry ice to ensure that it remains covered when the dry ice begins to sublimate during shipping. Cover the lid and place the styrofoam container into the shipping box and seal the box for shipping. Add the prepaid courier label to the shipping box and deliver the box to the courier pickup location for overnight delivery. That concludes our instructional video for the flash freezing of muscle biopsy for both histological imaging and biomolecular testing. We hope that promoting this training video and following this procedure at your clinical site will yield greater success in biopsy freezing and preservation. Please do not hesitate to reach out to Agata with any questions at www.agatabio.com. Thank you for watching.